everyone, I'm Sarah, and this is Budget Sew, where we create stylish, fashionable looks as inexpensively as possible. Today, we're doing a sew along to Simplicity 8999, View B in a size medium. Simplicity 8999 was published in 1999 and is a Mrs. Pants and Knit Top pattern. The wide neck top, View A, has three quarter length sleeves and is sized for stretch knits only, such as jerseys, lightweight double knits, and stretch velvet. The elastic drawstring waist pants have pockets and come in two lengths. View B's pants are full length and View C are cut at the mid calf. The recommended fabrics for the pants are cotton and cotton blends silk and silk types, rayons, crushed velvet, linen, and linen blends. The fabric that I chose is a cotton blend of 60% cotton and 40% polyester, so my pants will be comfortable to wear around the house but still look great for wearing outside the home. My fabric is a navy blue queen size sheet that I bought from Valley Village thrift stores for $6.99. Since this is a queen size sheet, I was able to squeeze out a second pair of pants, New Look 6203, View I. The link to that sew along is right here at the top of the screen. Yes, that's right, I made two pairs of pants for less than $7. I bought this uncut, factory folded pattern from Value Village thrift stores for $1.99. The envelope contained all sizes extra small through extra large. I chose to make up the pants in a size medium, which were a 1416 according to the measurements on the pattern envelope, but they were huge. There was way too much fabric in the hips, thighs, and waist. It looked like I stole my big brother's pants, or MC Hammer's. The ease for the hip was 11 and 3 quarter inches, so I had to unpick the pants and cut them down to a smaller size and then re-sew them back together. One other change that I made to this pattern was my version of the pants has an elastic waist rather than a drawstring elastic waist. I'm much more comfortable with an elastic waist and prefer not to have to tie the drawstrings all the time. This alteration did not change the overall look of the pattern. This is how I laid out my pattern pieces. There are nine pieces in total for this pattern but the pants use six. Pieces four through nine are the pants front, pants back, pockets, casing, tie end, and elastic guide. I use pieces four to nine only because I made up my pants with an elastic waist rather than a drawstring. The additional pattern pieces you see here are for New Look 6203. When I laid out the pattern pieces, I lined up the bottom of the pants with the hemmed edge of the sheet. I did not unpick any hems. The pattern calls for an inch and a half hem, but I'm hoping these pants will be the perfect length. If not, I'll be able to lengthen or shorten them easily. The first thing I did was pin the front to the back at the inner leg seams, matching the notches and small dots. Since I'm using a Simplicity sewing pattern, I thought I'd take a look at my mom's Simplicity sewing book from 1975 for some tips on sewing pants. I like that this book has a chapter all about pants, the go everywhere favorite. From party pajamas to tailored slacks, the emphasis on pants is with us on a continual basis, and the fabrics for making pants are just as numerous as the styles. Flowing knits, panoramic prints, or classic tweeds and plaids. I love 70s sewing patterns. The Simplicity Sewing Book said, there are four basic steps in making pants. Step one, measure. Determine your pants measurements. I chose a size medium based on the measurements on the pattern envelope. Step two, alter. Adjust the pattern to correspond with your measurements. 
I did not adjust the length of the pants pattern because of how I laid them out on the fabric. Step 3. Adjust a trial pair of pants to solve any figure problems not corrected by measuring and altering. And finally, step 4. Construction. This book has step-by-step -step techniques. My next step was to add the pockets. With the right sides of fabric together, I pinned the pockets to the pants, matching the large dots, and ensured that the raw edges of the pocket and the pants were even. I find it interesting that the pattern's instructions started to sew the front to the back inseam first, then sew the center seam, and then finally the side seams, as opposed to the Simplicity Sewing Book which indicated that the side seams and inseams should be sewn first, then the crotch seam. What seam do you sew first when constructing pants? Leave me a note in the comments section below. At the sewing machine, I sewed the front to the back at the inner leg seams and stretch the back to fit as indicated in the pattern instructions. I like that the Simplicity Sewing Book had a section on how to sew pull-on pants. It said, pull-on pants are perfect for the on-the-go life modern women lead today. They are comfortable to wear and easy to sew, especially those with an elastic in the waistline casing. I wanted a comfy pair of pants that fit well and looked smart. I thought that this simplicity pattern was perfect for the job. My next step was to sew the pockets to the pants. I like that the Simplicity Sewing Book's tips on how to sew pull-on pants. For example, it suggested that because the pattern pieces do not have darts and there is no zipper opening to distinguish the front from the back, before removing the tissue pattern pieces, mark F for the front and B for the back on the wrong side of the cut pattern piece with Taylor's chalk. I wrote SF and SB for simplicity front and simplicity back on my pattern pieces because I was sewing more than one pair of pants out of the same fabric. Then I pressed the seams towards the pocket and press the pockets out as indicated in the instructions. Then, with the right sides of the fabric together, I pin the center seam, matching the inner leg seams and notches. The pattern's instructions show how to lay one piece on top of the other, like I did, but the Simplicity Sewing Book suggested a different way to sew the crotch seam. It recommended, with the right sides together, place one pant leg inside the other, matching inseams and baste the crotch seam. Try on the pants to double check the fit through the crotch and adjust if necessary. Back at the sewing machine, I sewed the center seam. When I started sewing these pants, I began with a navy blue thread, but then I changed my mind and switched to a lovely emerald green. I bought this 100% polyester serger thread from Fabricland for $1.99. Serger thread is a bit thinner than the regular thread I would have used to sew, but all my seams will be double stitched and some of them top stitched, so I'm not worried about the strength of the seams. I chose the emerald green because I like the idea of a contrasting thread. These little details make the pants uniquely mine and contributed to a designer look. To reinforce the center seam, I stitched again over the first stitching as recommended in the pattern instructions. Then I trimmed the seam in the curved area to a quarter of an inch or six millimeters. Usually I clip this curve, cutting out little triangles of fabric, but this time I followed the directions and trimmed the seam. Before I continue with the sew along, please share this video with your friends and family. 
I would love to help others sew and upcycle on a budget and troubleshoot their favorite patterns. I also love sharing the treasure that I find at thrift stores. If you'd like to see more from Budget Sew, please subscribe and make sure that the bell is on so you receive a notification when I release a new video. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Budget Sew. Now, back to the sew along! My next step was to pin the side seams. The instructions said, pin front to back at side seams, matching large dot. Stitch side seam, leaving opening between large dots. This is a step where I made a mistake. Remember earlier where I pressed the pocket and seam outward? Well, here I folded the pockets back in the pants, which created a problem later. The pockets should stay pressed out and the pinning should occur above and below the pocket. I pinned above and below the pocket, but I tucked the pockets back in. This puts the pockets on the outside of the pants. At the sewing machine, I sewed the side seams, oblivious to the mistake I made pinning. I thought I followed the instructions correctly by stitching the side seam leaving an opening between the large dots. It was only when I turned the pants the right way out that I realized my error. One thing I like about the pattern instructions was that it had a section for the knit top called About Knits. It said, use polyester cotton thread and ballpoint needles. Then it broke down the type of knit with a description, the correct needle size, and the corresponding stitch length. For example, single knit is usually lightweight jersey or tricot. Most have 50% stretch. Use needle size 9 or 11 with a stitch length of 10 to 12 inches. Double knit is most often used in polyester pantsuits. Many have 18 to 25% stretch. Use an 11 or 14 size needle and 10 to 12 stitches per inch. Sweater knit is loosely woven and most sweater knits have 100% stretch. Use needle size 11 or 14 and 10 stitches to the inch. The last example in the about knit section is swimwear and power knit. They have two-way stretch with 100% stretch or more. Use a 14 or 16 size needle and 10 to 12 stitches to the inch. I unpick the top of the pants above and a few inches below the pocket and press the pocket out. Then I re-sewed the side seam and pockets correctly. My next step was not in the pattern instructions. I top stitched the outer leg seams. The Simplicity Sewing Book had a chapter about decorative extras. The chapter was called Distinctive Details, Making the Difference. It said, your garment style and individuality are determined to a great extent by the designer details that provide the finishing touch. Top stitching is basically a double purpose, holding seams flat and accenting them in a neat linear manner. It may be done in matching or contrast thread, depending on the effect you wish to create. In either case, the stitching must be straight and even, since it will show up distinctly on the finished garment. Then I sewed the center back and front seam of the elastic casing. The pattern piece for the casing was only one piece, but since I did not have quite enough fabric for a continuous piece, my casing was made out of two pieces of fabric. My next step was to pin the pocket edges together from the side seam to the upper edge. I matched up the notches and the edges for the best fit. I 
liked that the instructions of this pattern are very clear and concise with large illustrations included. The illustrations are also labeled just in case the sewer or sewist cannot determine what the picture is showing. For example, when sewing the center seam, the pants are labeled center back and center front. These illustrations on this It's So Easy, It's Simplicity pattern make it a great pattern to learn to sew. Then with the right sides of the fabric together, I pin the casing to the pants. I match the centers and place the side seams at the small dots. The About Knit section included with this pattern had more tips. It said, seam allowances are 5 eighths of an inch or 1.5 centimeters unless otherwise indicated. If you use a zigzag machine, use a narrow stitch and medium length. Trim the seam to a quarter of an inch or six millimeters and overcast edges together by machine. If you use a straight stitch, stretch fabric as you sew, unless working on a firm double knit and sew seams two to three times close together. There's also a note in the about knit section that says, a roller presser foot used on double knits will not stretch the top layer of fabric and thus keeps seams even. On single knits, it will not hold tricots and sometimes causes skipped stitches. For sweater knits, it is a must since yarn loops catch on a regular foot. These are great tips for sewing with knits. At the sewing machine, I sewed the pockets first. This is my first pair of pants that I've made with pockets. Keep in mind that I've been sewing since I was a teenager, but I've never sewn a pocket. In the past, I didn't include them because I felt that they were bulky, but it was a new day and time for a change. Then, I sewed the elastic casing to the pants. As I sewed, I admired the green thread on the navy blue pants. Then I pinned the casing down over the seam of the waistband. To do this, I pressed up the seam at the waist and folded down the top of the casing. I folded over the raw edge of the casing 3 8 of an inch and folded it over again until the folded edge extended a quarter of an inch below the seam. I left an opening at the back of the casing so that I could insert my elastic. At the sewing machine, I sewed the casing down. The Simplicity Sewing Book had a section about adding a casing to pants or a skirt with a fitted waist. It said, garments with casings are fast to sew as well as easy to pull on and off. Add a casing to a skirt or pants pattern with a fitted waist to reduce your stitching time. Casing should be an eighth of an inch or three millimeters wider than the elastic. If your pattern has a fitted waist, but you don't want to insert the zipper, extend the side seam straight up from the hip area. Add twice the casing width, plus a quarter of an inch or six millimeters above the waist seam line. Stitch seams, omitting darts. I thought I was doing so well with these pants, 
I inserted the elastic into the casing and tried them on. They were huge! There was no way to make them look better unless I unpicked the side seams. This included unpicking all my top stitching and the pockets. To make the pants smaller, I laid the pants pattern of New Look 6203 over the top of my Simplicity pants. I marked the waist and hip size from the New Look pattern and then tapered the seam down, not altering the calf of the pants. Even though I liked the New Look pants that I made earlier, I didn't want to make them again because I wanted to give these Simplicity pants a fair chance. I drew a chalk line and cut off the excess fabric. Here we go again! I reattached the pockets, re-sewed and top stitched the side seams, reattached the smaller casing, and then reinserted the elastic. That was a lot of work. To determine how much elastic to use, I cut my elastic to my waist size plus one inch or 2.5 centimeters. Since this Simplicity sewing pattern did not have instructions for an elastic waist, I followed the Simplicity Sewing Book's instructions that said, Cut a piece of elastic to the desired waist measurement. Pin a safety pin to one end of the elastic and insert pin through the opening in the casing. Pull through using the pin to slide the elastic. Try on pants and adjust the elastic to fit. Pin the ends of the elastic together with the safety pin. Overlap the end of the elastic half an inch, or in my case, one inch, and stitch together securely with a square pattern. Then I distributed the fullness of the fabric evenly. Then I hemmed my pants. The pattern piece allowed for an inch and a half hem. I folded over my hem one inch because the bottom of the pants were placed on the hem of the sheep so there was no raw edge. At the sewing machine, I sewed the hem. The pattern instruction said, mark depth of hem, trim evenly. To edge finish the raw edge, stitch under a quarter of an inch or six millimeters on raw edge zigzag or overlock serge. Slip stitch hem in place. I used a straight stitch on my pants so that the hem would be visible. I wanted the emerald green thread used on the hem to match the green top stitching on the rest of the pants. My last step was to add a little square of maroon fabric to mark the inside back of my pants. The Simplicity Sewing Book had a different suggestion that I will add to my next pair of pants. It said, add a folded strip of seam tape to indicate the back, then stitch a cross opening where the elastic was pulled through. I like this idea much better because it adds a loop to your pants so you can hang them on a clothes hook. Here are the finished pants.
pattern lived up to its description being an it's so easy, it's simplicity pattern because the pants were very easy to sew and the instructions were very clear. I also love the pockets. Next time I make up this pattern, I'll be sure to take into consideration the amount of ease and use a smaller size. To complete the look, I'm wearing a chiffon Forever 21 tunic in a lovely olive green that I bought from Value Village Thrift Store. I bought the Liz Claiborne purse from Value Village as well, and then repaired the handles. The link to the handbag handle repair video is right here at the top of the screen. The Dex Flex Comfort Shoes are from Pela Shoe Store. The leaf print scarf and the gold necklace are both from the Salvation Army Charity Store and the Givenchy earrings were in a Ziploc bag full of jewelry that I bought for $5 at a church Christmas bazaar. I hope you enjoyed my sew along to Simplicity 8999. Please like and share this video with your friends and family. And if you'd like to see more from Budget Sew, please subscribe. And if you'd like to stay up to date with Budget Sew, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Budget Sew. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Thank you.